Good morning, Parkside members, guests. Welcome to our worship gathering online. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to lead you into this song called A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Uh, I believe the words of this hymn are true and right. Let's offer this up in praise to him. Let's sing. A mighty fortress is our God. A
morning, Parkside. Uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, today's worship service. Uh, today's uh, a special day as uh, we look into uh, God's, uh, God's Word. Today we're going to talk about uh, choosing, uh, choosing faith, uh, not uh, fear. Uh, casting our, our burdens uh, before uh, God the Father. We're going to talk about speaking the truth, uh, the truth in love, and then uh, protecting uh, our sanity in, uh, in, in these times uh, by, by running to the Father. But before we begin, what I'd like to do is take this time uh, to just basically let uh, the scripture, uh, Psalm uh, 46, wash, uh, wash over uh, us as uh, we consider th the power and the might of God because our God is a, is a mighty fortress. Uh, he is a refuge uh, in times of, of trouble and that's the times we live in. Uh, they are, are troubled. And so, um, we want to exalt God, and um, we, we want to praise, uh, praise Him. So hear, uh, hear, these, uh, hear these words. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. As we begin, let's, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and offer you worship. Lord, we come to you because you are worthy. You are worthy of all glory and honor and power. You are the sovereign Lord over all your works. Thank you for your word, for it is good. Thank you that you have not left us to ourselves. And, and God, in these troubled times, we need you. And God, in these times of difficulty, 
We need your light to shine through us. Lord, we need your love to overflow through us into a world that is getting darker. These days have left us disoriented and we look to you for our help. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, Lord, our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our King, our friend. Amen. If there is anything that we can get from the gospel, is that we are loved by God. I was reminded this week in Jude 1 that God loves us. We are called the beloved. And in this time, we can forget that. And so we want to talk about choosing faith, not fear. We want to cast our cares, our anxieties upon him. And in times of difficulty, we want to speak the truth in love. And then the third thing, we need to protect our sanity. We need to run to the Father when we find ourselves distressed. It's been a while since uh, I've caught up with you and uh, like you, uh, it's nice to see maybe a little glimpse of normalcy. Uh, my uh, wife and daughter, uh, they went on a, a camping trip to Silver Falls. They camped for five days. They camped in the rain. Why anybody would do that, I really don't know. Uh, but they did invite me to uh, take uh, a, a hike, uh, maybe not a literal hike, but uh, a hike uh, with, uh, with Lydia. And uh, so we did the uh, Silver uh, Falls Trail. And she and I did it in about three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, my watch, uh, my smart watch, said it was like going up and down 60 uh, flights of, of steps. Uh, it was 20,000 steps. All I know, I was tired at the end. But what a lot of beautiful uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful scenery. So it was nice uh, to get out. We really didn't see um, hardly anyone until um, later in the morning. And then uh, that whole social distancing thing um, it became a little difficult. Um, but um, uh, every day um, I've been going uh, to, uh, to work. Uh, Roger uh, sent me some uh, funnies. Uh, this one about uh, Groundhog's Day was, well, it's quarantine day again. And certainly, even going to work, I found that, tr that true. Uh, the one thing uh, my job at work is to make sure that uh, the employees are safe, that we're keeping uh, the correct social uh, distancing. So I'm offering, do you want a mask? Uh, you know, hey, we need to keep six feet apart and uh, just trying to keep uh, people healthy, you know, um, and ask, uh, are you healthy? And we don't want any visitors at this time. So uh, in, in, in some ways, it's, it's just trying to keep our employees safe, but it's anything but uh, normal. One day in April, uh, my walk during lunch on a work day, 
the parking lots empty. Uh, the businesses in our business park, uh, they had shut down. And uh, it, was, um, uh, it was just disorienting to see this beautiful spring day and the parking lot empty. Uh, one day, uh, a colleague and I decided to go for a takeout at the mall. And the mall was empty. And it was just uh, surreal uh, to, uh, to uh, look at that. But one thing that uh, I've noticed on the roads, uh, I uh, have always commuted a long way to uh, work. And uh, I will say the, the one upside is well, the freeways are empty. And it only takes me an hour to get to work versus the hour and a half to two hours that it normally takes. But I've noticed that uh, there's a new kind of law uh, on the, the road. Um, Melanie, for uh, Christmas, uh, gave me a dash cam. And uh, it's, it's mounted in my car. And um, one day I am coming uh, home and uh, uh, I'm just seeing people pass on double uh, yellow lines and uh, uh, speeding. Uh, I was leaving our, our town of Cherry Grove and these two trucks come out of nowhere and you will notice the double solid yellow uh, line there. And then uh, this is actually one of my favorites is uh, uh, I was just coming on to uh, I-5 and, uh, and these cars just out of n nowhere. I I'm going 55 miles an hour, and these cars have to be going over 100 miles an hour. It's just like, wow, this is crazy. I had another incident where um, uh, I guess I didn't let this guy in as we were merging, uh, and then he tries to run me uh, off, uh, off the road. And then my last favorite, um, uh, this guy came up behind me, and, and I so wish I could show you his face because uh, it, it, it's, it's frowning, it's, it's full of anguish, it's full of hatred, and, um, and uh, yet uh, he decides um, to, um, yes, give me uh, the sign uh, there. So, so there you go. Now, what I want to say to you um, is that these things that I've experienced, and your experiences are, are, are different as well, they're doing something uh, to us. A friend of mine used the image of putting rocks in our backpack. And I want you to know that we all have rocks in our backpack because of what is going on in our world. Uh, you can call it the, the pandemic, and you can call it the injustice and the violence. You can call it the, the, the isolation. Uh, you can uh, call it uh, the, the violence w that we're, we're seeing. They have affected us. They've affected you. And you would have your own uh, sets of, of stories. And they are like rocks in our packs. They're big and they can be heavy. And we have to remind ourselves not for God. And so there's this danger you know, being uh, students of, of the Bible, we, uh, we know, you know, we know that um, in the last days, perilous times will come. Uh, by the way, the, the Greek word for that is violent days, hard days, difficult days, distressing days shall uh, come. First, uh, Titus 4.1 says that the Spirit says that in the latter uh, time, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. 
Peter uh, says uh, in his letter, he says, knowing this first, he says, scoffers will come in the last days, scoffing, following their own sinful uh, desires. And so even Jesus said that in the last days there will come lawless. And here we're experiencing them. And so what Jesus said, he said that these violent times will come and the love of many will grow cold. You and I are in danger. We are in danger from ourselves, of ourselves. Danger of our watch uh, failing. Failing from the times and our love growing cold. We're in danger of lying to ourselves, giving into the fear and turning to unreasonableness. We're in danger of lapsing back into old habits, becoming sleepy and busy. So let's turn to our passage. 1 Peter 5.1 says, So I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. In distressing times, our spiritual leaders, our leaders, our uh, pastors, Pastor Doug, uh, Pastor Roger, Pastor Avery, uh, they uh, have a tremendous responsibility in, in guiding us spiritually through uh, this, uh, these times. Uh, Peter is saying, um, I have some things to say to you, and that's shepherd the flock of God. Shepherd the flock that has been entrusted to you. Don't neglect that work. Peter uh, is saying you're called not to take advantage. As shepherds, uh, you're not called to be lazy in his work. Uh, you're not called to be a dictator or a taskmaster or domineering. You're called to be examples. Examples that are holy, pure, peaceable, gentle, courteous, reasonable, merciful, impartial, and sincere. These are leaders, are examples to us. And we have to remind what is it that Jesus calls us to be, that in difficult times, love should be overflowing through us. First Peter 5, 4 says, and when the chief shepherd appears, because he is coming back again. And he says, my reward is with me and you will receive an unfading crown of glory. First Peter 5, 5 says, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the hum humble. Respect, courtesy, reasonable. And, and here's this clear warning. Because as, as, as we see the spirit of the age that is around us, it's, it's one of pride, of arrogance, of anger. And yet, the scriptures are clear. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. So what do we do in times of distress? 
we run to the Father. We cast our anxieties on Him because He cares for us. We cast our anxieties, the rocks in our backpack, we cast at His feet. Peter is telling us, let go of fear. Let go of the anger. God cares for you and he has not forgot you. Then Peter goes on in 5.8, 1 Peter 5.8, he says, be sober-minded, be watchful, be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world, and that after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore Confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So take up the watch. That's what Peter is telling us. Take up the watch. We have an enemy. And he kills and steals and destroys. Our enemy is a murderer. He's a murderer of peace. He's a murderer of holiness. We live in difficult times and we see injustice in our streets that's the work of the enemy. He is a champion of injustice. Our enemy is foul and make no mistake, our enemy is strong. And this is where we run to the Father because he cares for us. He's our fortress. He's our mighty fortress. We, you and I, are in danger. We're in danger uh, to ourselves. Danger of the watch failing. Danger of giving in uh, to uh, despair. The scriptures call us to be sober-minded, to be watchful. Resist him firm in your faith. God calls us to faith, not fear. And yes, we're gonna, there's gonna be sufferings. But when the fear sets in and the love grows cold and our peace gives way, we've picked up rocks that we were never meant to carry. There's a song I uh, want um, you to listen to. It's called Run uh, to the Father. And it begins by saying, I've carried a burden far too long on my own. And for some of us, for you and I, we need to take our burdens and cast them before him. We weren't created to bear that kind of burden. Do you hear his call? And the words go, I hear your invitation to let it all go. That goes back to Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I was reminded of that scripture um, because uh, my daughter uh, created uh, a piece of artwork uh, 
uh, I've included it in uh, the Psalm 46 uh, that says, Be still and know that I am God. And it really did give me pause because I needed that. I needed to just sit in silence and uh, not um, be so anxious uh, of, of the times that uh, we're, we're in. The um, takeaways from today, choose faith, not fear. You are loved by the Father. We are preserved by the Son. Cast all your cares, your anxieties before Him. Choose to love. Choose to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15, because we are called to do so. And then the third thing, protect your sanity. Take smaller doses of the news, uh, the radio, social media. Pray. Read your Bibles. Go for a walk. It really helps. I promise you. Uh, sit in silence. Uh, that's what I've been doing lately on my way to work. I've been sitting in silence and praying. Talk to a trusted friend, somebody you could confide in, somebody who will be an encouragement. In times of distress, run to the Father. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time um, in your word. Thank you that um, we can cast all our cares upon you. Lord, thank you that you hear us. I thank you that you love us. And Lord, that you call us to be part of your work. Lord, may your love flow through us and shine through us. And Lord, um, as we get caught up, Lord, just may we remember that this burden, we're not meant to carry it. Thank you that you got it. Thank you that you have us. Lord, thank you for the words to the song. Lord, my, my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to you again and again. Lord, thank you um, that you've redeemed us through your son. And Lord, it's an amazing love. God help uh, Pastor Doug Pastor Roger, Pastor Avery, as they shepherd us. Lord, give them uh, wisdom that is from above. Thank you uh, for uh, our church leaders. And uh, Lord, just help them to guide, uh, guide us. God, we love you. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Surgeon, my 
soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 you saw my condition. Had a plan from the Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a contest for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I. Run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh. For my first breath, running into your arms is running to life from death. I feel this rush deep in my chest. Your mercy is calling out just as I am. And I know I need you now. I run to the Father, fall into grace, done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again. I run to Father, fall into grace, done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found the sudden, my soul found a friend. I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Hey, thanks, Larry, for that important reminder that when we get stuck, okay, when we when we feel like we've hit a wall or we get we're discouraged, we're we we're fearful, we don't know what to do, don't stop, just keep running, right? God's there, God's ready for to wrap his arms around us and to love us, and uh, that that's the best part of being a follower of Jesus, right? Is we have someone that we can we can go to, we can lean on that that will carry our burdens for us, that that we can cry to. Uh, be angry with and, and Jesus is just there. So thanks Larry for that that reminder. In fact, you're gonna get to hear more from from Larry and actually from Norm and, and Pastor Roger myself because we're gonna we're gonna tag team this next series. Uh, we're gonna begin it next week and we're calling it seven letters to seven churches. Each week one of us is gonna unpack one of seven letters that uh, the Apostle John was commissioned to write by Jesus in the book of Revelation, right? He was he was told by Jesus, I want, you, I want you to write these seven letters to these seven prominent churches in Asia Minor who were, quite frankly, buckling 
They were buckling under the, the pressure, uh, the, the persecution, uh, the, the violence, the, the unknown, the misdirection. They, they lost their way. And so Jesus said, I need you to write these letters to these, these churches. And so uh, we're going to take a deep dive into these letters. And really the purpose of that is so that as we reopen our campus, that we'll be able to, to say, hey, this is how Parkside, this is how our church is going to maintain a healthy spiritual environment in the midst of, of the, the, the crashing waves, the, the, the chaos, the, the societal change, the cultural unrest that we find ourselves uh, facing every single day. We want to make sure that as we gather back together, that as we continue to move forward as a church, that we don't get lost, that we don't forget the Great Commission, that we don't forget Jesus, that we, we continue, as Larry said, as we continue to run to Jesus. So that's kind of the purpose of, of going through these series, of looking at these letters. So please join us. Please make it a priority to join us as we walk through, again, these seven letters to seven churches that are found in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. I hope you'll make it a priority to join us. And then just one more quick announcement. Uh, we, do, we had so much fun at our last barbecue. I hope you made it to the last barbecue, but we, we had so much fun. You know what? We, we thought, let's just do it again. Let's have a repeat performance. So on Sunday, July 12th, we're going to do another church barbecue, again, from 11 to 1. And so we, if, if you missed the last one, you won't want to miss this one. If you made it to the last one, you know you won't want to miss this one. And so, uh, again, July 12th from 11 to 1, bring yourself, bring a drink, bring a, a lounge chair, a beach chair. We'll be out in the parking lot. We'll have pop-ups up again and tables and contactless food, burgers and hot dogs and, and some dessert. And so uh, please join us for that opportunity that we have again to, to gather together to see each other uh, on Sunday, July 12th. So again, thanks for joining us this morning. Let me close us out in a word of prayer. God, I'm so thankful, Lord, that you sent your son Jesus that, that came down and, and died for our sins. And even though he's in heaven, God, we, he, we can still run to him. Lord, you're still there for us to lean on. God, for us to cast our burdens on. Uh, God, you desire to be a part of our lives, God, and so we're so thankful for that. Lord, thank you for, for Larry, uh, for his message, and God, I just pray that you continue to, to guide us and to direct us as we look to reopen our campus, as we continue to be to together through things like barbecues and, and Zoom meetings, and, and more importantly, God, as we continue to fulfill the Great Commission, the great commandment to love God and to love others, to love our neighbors, ourselves, God. And we, we love you. We're so thankful for our relationship with you. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Parkside. See you next week.